parental advisory, explicit content. Please put the women and kids to bed, or women and kids, please put your sheep ass husband and father to bed. You've been warned. All right, y'all, I'm here to ask the tough questions that a lot of you guys are probably too pussy to ask because you're afraid that somebody might say something to you. But guess what? The next time I care about what another man thinks about football will be the first. I only care about my own opinions and analysis because I know I'll put in the work and I'm knowledgeable and unbiased with mine. All right. All right. So that was the intro to my epic study on AJ Terrell versus Jeffrey Okuda. Matter of fact, right here. How is Okuda better than AJ Terrell? Now, I posed that question on May 9th of 2020 and they had the internet going nuts <laughs> like like Paul Wall said back in the day right people were mad they could not understand how I could question how AJ Terrell may be even better than Jeffrey Okuda despite the fact that Jeffrey Okuda was the third overall pick and AJ Terrell went somewhere in the late teens I believe to the Atlanta Falcons now fast forward this is awkward Jeffrey Okuda has now been traded to the Atlanta Falcons, AJ Terrell's team for a fifth round draft pick. Now, let's revisit that, right? Because that was a point of contention for your boy right here, because I did not understand because I was just doing analysis based on being unbiased and really digging into it, right? I went through individual schedules face, meaning which receivers were on the other end of the coverage between AJ Terrell and Jeffrey Okuda. I saw that Jeffrey Okuda was the one who played in a ton of zone. They were playing a ton of cover three, cover four, and some matchup zone as well. They, they sprinkled some man coverage in there, but he had the benefit of being able to vertically bail and being able to work area coverage. To me, that helped out his lack of athleticism. I said it before. I don't think that Jeffrey Okuda is that good of an athlete. And you didn't get tested because a lot of the guys that he faced on his individual schedule, not the team's face, right? Penn State, great team, right? My team, great team. But the the receivers that he faced is a little bit different than the receivers that someone else may face because he was not shadowing. He stayed on one side, so he didn't get to see a KJ Hamler. All right. So you have to keep that in mind when you're talking about an individual team. And even if the team is good, it does not mean the receivers are good. You can have a great team and it be a more of a running base team with a good defense and maybe an average quarterback. Now, AJ Terrell, on the other hand, he saw some crazy ass matchups, right? As we know, people wanted to judge him by the Jamar Chase thing, right? Jamar Chase, the best receiver, not named Justin Jefferson, in college football at the time, being thrown to by Joe Burrow. Think about that. We seeing that in the NFL, and it's still unstoppable. That is tough. And it was in shadow coverage, man shadow coverage. That's just a tough ass to be judging someone on when the other cats get to face uh, Bubby Stevenson or somebody like that who we never heard of uh, again, right? Working at Geico now. Your man working at Jiffy Oil Lube Quick Change Oil Service and Ice Cream Cones. Like, what are we doing here? You can't do that. That's how I do my analysis on stuff right there. I have to see who you are against your best competition. A lot of these fans come in here and get mad, and they be like, well, I wanted to see him against lesser competition. No, there's no lesser competition in the NFL. It is what it is. I'm sorry. I can't I cannot judge you by you going against people who aren't NFL material and then project that against all NFL material. It just doesn't work that way. Now, AJ Terrell has gone on to make an all pro team. Now, I'll be completely honest with you. I have no clue about the Atlanta Falcons. I don't watch the Atlanta Falcons. I don't cover them anymore. I you can say cold turkey. Only time I see Atlanta Falcons if they face um one of my uh, my team or, or a team that I cover, right? So that's the only time I get to see Atlanta Falcons. From what I saw, um, obviously he made the all-pro team. He's better than Jeffrey Okuda, flat out. I don't know. Everyone in that damn thing should come back and apologize, right? All the people who were calling me names and saying that's why I work on YouTube and all this and that while watching me on YouTube, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Goofy shit like that. Listen, bro. 
If if ESPN is the standard, go watch ESPN. Don't be on YouTube watching me and then get mad at me and say that's why I'm on YouTube. That makes sense to whom? The fuck out of here. But listen, Jeffrey Okuda, though, moving it forward, he just played with Aaron Glenn, right, as his cornerbacks coach or DB coach there. Uh, one of the better guys you can be coached by, in my opinion, there, and it did not work out for him in, in Detroit. I can't say that I know who Atlanta's coaching staff is there, but maybe, I don't, I don't know. They're two totally different type of cats. I think A.J. Terrell's a man coverage guy. You put him on there, let him press, let him do different things like that. Okuda, to me, is a straight zone corner. You picked a zone corner with the number three overall pick. Yeah, and you had to trade him. He does not offer versatility in that, I'm telling you. Shifty guys like a Devontae Adams and all these type of cats who bring in that type of flavor in, I don't think he has the hips to be able to match that, right? He has diving board hips, and he ran a 4.48 and a 4.50 at the combine. He's not fast. I remember thinking to myself, someone else said it too in that comment section. Maybe he's a safety because he's a very good tackler. Uh, he's pretty physical. I think he will work well in safety. Maybe he'll be a conversion guy like a Charles Woodson uh, later on in his career, and that can kind of extend his career there. But I'm not ready to say that he can't be a cornerback in the National Football League. I just thought that being, him being a third pick was crazy to me, or even him being being said to be better than A.J. Terrell was crazy to me. But that's life, man. That's just analysis, baby. Sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose. I've been on the losing end, and people will let me know <laughs> that I've been on the losing end of analysis, right? All you're doing is giving your own unbiased opinion if you're someone like me, right? Based on deep analysis, though. I go, I really, I really grind, baby. I really be out here grinding, but you can't get everything right. And I just so happen to have gotten this one right with Jeff Okuda. So I want to let you, I want to know what you guys now think about AJ Terrell versus Jeffrey Okuda. And I guarantee you 100% of those people who are in that comment section talking shit to me won't show back up, right? Because that's what the internet is about. But I can't go anywhere because I have this channel and people will let me know when I'm wrong on something from 1971. The fuck out of here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But maybe Jeff Okuda, they can find a role for him or find a way to make him more impactful. Maybe a change of scenery will, will do that there. Uh, I still think he does have some talent. You just have to be able to know what someone's skill set is. I actually think that if he went to a place like Seattle with Pete Carroll and how they uh, work some of their zone coverages there, I thought, I still think he could be a very good player. So I don't know what they do in Atlanta. I do know what A.J. Terrell is good at, but he, to me, can play zone as well. So you have to let me know out there. All right. It's your boy Mid-Atlantic Murph checking in with you boys out there. Let me know what you think. All right. It wasn't some type of man play. Actually, look at it. I think the ball is tipped. Yeah, it looks like it's tipped. Yeah, it's tipped. I don't know. It's he's put it this way. It's an overthrow, right? And he's trying to get it to this man. And here's Okuda's man. He keeps working vertically and he just throws it right to Okuda. That's his those are his, those are his three interceptions for his entire career. Three years. Um I'm confused. Very confused by this, right? Especially and this is only in comparison to AJ Toro with people downing him, right, as a two-year starter and somebody who's played much better competition, right? Much more dynamic receiver and wide receiver, quarterback and wide receiver combinations, all right? All right, so let's get back into this schedule here. Michigan State, not a good offensive team, not a good quarterback. Uh, the best receiver, I think, is Daryl Stewart, right? I would say Daryl Stewart is Michigan State's best receiver, and what is he, like a 700-yard receiver? He doesn't have help, and he's not some type of dynamic athlete either, right? He's a bigger, slower type guy, in my opinion. All right, so Wisconsin. Wisconsin has hmm, Wisconsin has a guy in Quintez Cephas who I thought was was like kind of a burner guy, but I don't know. He man ran a 4-7, right? Quintez Cephas, Cephas ran a 4-7 at the NFL Combine. That works right in Jeffrey Okuda's favor, right? Because I don't know how fast Jeffrey Okuda is, right? But it's not like he guarded Quintez Cephas and shadowed him or anything like that. And it's not like Quintez Cephas is some type of 
uh, superstar, right? He was a fifth or sixth round draft pick. He's a good player. I'll give him props for that. He played him twice. But one of the games, Quintez Cephas, the, the second game they played him in the, in the championship game, Quintez Cephas went for like 130 yards. If Jeffrey Okuda is that, that dude, why wouldn't they have him stop Quintez Cephas? That would be the end of Wisconsin, for real. But it is what it is, right? So Maryland, nope. Rutgers, nope. Penn State, yes. K.J. Hamler is that type of receiver that is all the rage right now. If we think thinking about guys in the NFL, that's why guys are getting drafted like Henry Ruggs and, and Jerry Judy and all these guys are a little bit more dynamic, right? K.J. Hamler fits that. Tyreek Hill, all these guys like that. Jamar Chase, he's the epitome of that. He is the best wide receiver in all of college football. And if he were allowed to come out this year, I think he would have been the first wide receiver taken. He's NFL ready. And that's what we judge A.J. Terrell on. But uh, solely, only solely judging him on that one game where he shadowed the very best guy. He shadowed him for an entire half, right? And I'd be remiss to not point out that that boogeyman, Jamar Chase, also had the number one overall pick in the draft throwing him the football. Same thing with seeing A.J. Terrell against Alabama. He had Tua, the number five overall pick in the draft, throwing the ball to Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs, two first-round draft picks, Devontae Smith, Jalen Waddle, two first-round draft picks when they come out next season. Like, come on, man. All right, so I wanted you to check this out, right? This is the difference, right? This is K.J. Hamler, right? So on third down, Okuda would slide to the slot and face K.J. Hamler on third down, right? So it's better than nothing, right? He didn't shadow him, but he would face him on third down um, for certain packages that they had there. But check this out, right? Sean Clifford is not Joe Burrow. As dynamic as K.J. Hamler is, I honestly believe he would torch Jeffrey Okuda. I think he's just too fast for him and too quick, right? So Jeffrey Okuda right now is getting baked off the line of scrimmage, but Sean Clifford is locked in on one guy. Now look at this. Uh, comes the balance. Boom. Look at look at the space already created that quick. For, look, Jeffrey Okuda got muscle relaxed. Look. Uh, if that's Joe Burrow, he goes through his reads real quick, hits K.J. Hamler right here, and this is probably a big gainer, right? Look at this space created. I'm not making this up. This is the kind of stuff that you don't get to see if you don't go against a dynamic QB wide receiver duo. Let's check out another one. All right, here we go again. Man coverage against K.J. Hamler, very much in the mold of those explosive receivers that I mentioned before that we've seen A.J. Terrell go against, Devontae Smith, Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs, Jalen Waddle, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, guys like that, right? Once again, in breaking route, right? Quick slant here. Akuda damn near pulls the ripcord. Look at this. Boom. Look, he got faked out, and there really wasn't even an, a, a complete jab. Look, boom. Barely jabbed him right there. Akuda goes way out there past the hash. Now, look at this. This would have been super bad because he would have cut up under this, right, if Sean Clifford had enough time. You see Chase Young bearing down on him. You got Chase Young on the team, too, making shit easy for you. But he would have cut under this right here, and he probably was gone. Then what would we have said? It's a game of inches, man. That's what I'm saying. Game of inches. He cut under that. Okuda was straight smoked off the line of scrimmage. Again, same move. Boom. We don't know what it is, man, to have a, a dynamic QB wide receiver and hit a guy like this. I got these are just the questions, right? I just don't know. I'm maybe he doesn't, right? Maybe he locks up KJ Hamler or something like that. But we just don't know because we did not get a chance to see it. You cannot judge someone just because you saw them go against the best, right? The best on the best, the best QB with the best wide receiver, and this guy doesn't really get to do that, right? He's going against a mediocre quarterback. And a, a dynamic receiver who they just can't get him the ball. But even though the guy's beating him off the line of scrimmage, right? All right, here we go again. Man coverage against Nico Collins, who I think works more in his wheelhouse. Nico Collins has build-up speed. I think he does have some some deep speed, but I don't think it's anything earth-shattering like we've seen from a Jamar Chase or or Jerry Judy or Devontae Smith. But he's a bigger receiver, right? So Okuda running a four four eight and a four five zero is not going to be that damning going against a guy like this, right? So. We get to see something like this, right? Mm, I like it. Not bad. Not bad at all. Opens it up, right? Nice crossover steps there. Stays in phase. Shoots the... I love that right there, right? How many times I do this and we always see people shoot the wrong hand. But there you go. Left hand to the right shoulder pad. Kind of slips off a little bit. But we see the strength of Nico Collins here. Now, I've seen... like This happened to AJ Terrell in the Ohio State game, actually, right? with Austin Matt going up over him. But that's 
Austin Mack being thrown to by Justin Fields. This dude has Shea Patterson throwing to him in a, in a game of inches where Shea, Shea, Shea could have just put it up maybe a little bit more shallower in a game of inches. Look, he got mossed, right? You got Rost, mossed, whatever you want to call it right there. Game of inches, didn't get his foot down. But I still see it. Who's to say that that wouldn't happen with a better QB to wide receiver combination? This happened in the Clemson game, too, and that also worked to his advantage. All right, so this is undoubtedly one of the ones from Jeffrey Okuda that the NFL looked at. But you're going against a bigger wide receiver who is not a good route runner, in my opinion. Not like, how would this be? So look right here. Well, I already see some stuff, right? Coming off coming off the snap, he's not necessarily the best in me, right? If he's given a free release, we've seen it with the K.J. Hamlin. Nico Collins is not that good of a route runner. Look at him. He's already out position. If this is Jerry Judy with this type of spacing right off the line of scrimmage on an in-breaking route, He's going to torch Jeffrey Okuda doing this, right? He created some pretty good space, and he didn't do nothing. Thinking about being Jerry Judy, it's going to come at you a little bit faster, or Jamar Chase is going to come at you a lot faster, right? And then the angle is going to be much sharper. Look at him. He rounds this, this slant off. He just rounds it off. That allows Okuda to get back into the play, but he got back into the play, and he made the play. Now, technically, right, now this is the, what I hear, right? I had some lame tell me, like, oh, A.J. Terrell, uh, when he had those reps on Jamar Chase, you could have called it pass interference. Like I said before, if they don't call it, why the fuck are you talking about it, right? If we all play ball, we all get away with some shit, and we all sometimes don't get away with some shit. So it is what it is. But you wouldn't be able to call this a pass interference? That's clearly pass interference. The ball's not there. His hand's all over him, right? But it don't count. Right, because it wasn't called. This is a good play by Jeffrey Okuda. But I'm just saying, so you'll get that for A.J. Terrell's reps, but you won't hear that from Jeffrey Okuda's reps. All I'm saying is, please make it equal. That's all I'm saying. I just want shit to be fair out there. Shit is just not fair, and these sheeple will ride with whatever the media is saying, but nobody wants to play it right down the middle, except your boy right here, Murph Ball, in that top billing, baby. I'm always going to play it right down the middle. All right, here's another game of inches one, right? T. Higgins. Uh, this was the game that Jeffrey Okuda submitted himself as a third pick in a draft. This was a very good game for him. But was it one that he was set up to have a good game? Because check this out right here, right? Look at him. He's beat off the line right here from T. Higgins, at least in the transition, right? So they're running a, running a nine. Running a nine, and he's beat. Now, look, I don't know what happened right here. I, I don't have a replay of it where they show how he got this type of separation. But a game of inches. He's getting beat vertically as well. Just barely didn't get that in there. Barely didn't get that in there, but it, I, I saw the catch, and I saw the separation, but boom, that's what happened right there, right? So he made his name off of T. Higgins, but look at T. Higgins. This ain't right. Something wasn't going on with it. Look at that shit right there. He's air sleeping. He's done. His helmet came off. Look at it. He can barely get up. Either he haven't done core workout in 10 years or something's wrong with that man's head. Look at him. He on that weekend, that Bernie shit. Look at him. Uh, he's sleeping. Air sleeping. So, dynamic route runner. He's a bigger guy that works in Okuda's wheelhouse. I would imagine that Okuda's probably faster than him. And um, Justin Ross as well, who he went against. These are just bigger receivers. I wanted to see him against some dynamic guys. So, I'm just saying, it just leaves a lot to be desired to me, uh, the type of schedule that he had. And that's what I that's that's all I'm saying. Like I said 50 million times, I love Jeffrey Okuda. I just don't understand how it's fair that uh AJ Terrell is judged off of Jamar Chase and, and, and what happened right there when we haven't seen Okuda be put in that type of position. Because I'll be honest with you, I think Jamar Chase would have done the same shit to Jeffrey Okuda. And it may have been worse because I'm not sure he can run with Jamar Chase. And I know AJ Ter Terrell can run with Jamar Chase. As we've seen he was right there with Jamar Chase. He just didn't make the play. But it is what it is. I want out there, if you're unbiased, let me know how that's fair and let me know the dynamic receivers that we've seen Jeffrey Okuda face, the dynamic QB wide receiver combination. We've seen AJ Terrell. Well, people talk that dumb ACC shit. Man, come on. Y'all kidding me. Do y'all watch football or do you skim it? He's played against Auburn. He's played against Texas A&M. He's played against Debo Samuel, Shy Smith, and Brian Edwards at South Carolina for three years. He don't just he does not just play ACC guys. What are you talking about? We've seen him play at Alabama twice. He played against Jerry Judy, Devontae Smith, Jalen Waddle, and Henry Ruggs. 
Jeffrey Okuda never played against any of those guys. He never played against Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson and Terrace Marshall. He never played that. These guys, he's played a much tougher, stiffer competition than Jeffrey Okuda has. There's just nothing like that in the Big Ten right now. The Big Ten, to me, is known for great defenses, not great offensive personnel. The team that's known for great offensive personnel is his own team. So, right, so we get to see him go against those guys in practice. I love that. But the same thing with A.J. Terrell. He gets to go against the guys who – Okuda made a name off of T. Higgins and Justin Ross. He saw those guys every day for, for two years for Justin Ross and for three years for T. Higgins. So, I mean, what are we doing here, right? Not to mention Florida State has Tamar and Terry and guys like that in Miami with the guys that they have. Like, don't do the ACC shit, man. Don't skim football, just watch it, all right? So there you have it. It is what it is right there. I love Jeffrey Okuda. I just want to know how is it fair, all right? With that being said, thank you. Make sure you like Comment, subscribe, do all that jazz right there. It's your boy Murph Baldwin, the Underground King, top billing sports, and I am out. Peace. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing.